recently I've been getting a lot more into film photography. It's the most fun I've had in photography for a while. I've shot some normal film here in Bangkok on the streets and in portraits, but the most fun I've had with film has been with double exposures. Double exposures are when you expose one portion of film twice, combining two exposures into one photo. It doesn't always work out the way you planned it, but when it does, the results can be really exciting. Doing this on an analog film camera just adds to the fun as you don't know exactly what you're gonna get until you get the film back from development. Now of course, you could do this on a digital too. It might be easier, but in my opinion, it only feels right to do it on film. It's not just the look that makes film photography fun, even though the look really is a big part of it, which really cannot completely be replicated in digital. But it's also other things like just the delayed gratification of film photography that I really enjoy. You can't know the result, at least completely, until you get your film back from the lab, or if you develop it yourself, until you develop it. And when you add double exposure into this, well, I'm really resisting making the pun about it being doubly fun. It really is true though. <laughs> now there's a lot of things that can go wrong in double exposures. I'm gonna expand on how to shoot good double exposures later. But first, let's just get into how to actually do double exposure and what they are. So double exposures in film photography happen when you shoot two exposures in one portion of film without winding the film. So you're combining two photos into one. How to do this varies depending on your camera. On most mechanical SLRs, you have to make some sort of a camera hack almost. On my Pentax you press the button on the bottom to unlock the film and then hold everything in place while winding the film so that nothing actually happens inside. This is how you usually do it on a mechanical SLR film camera. Later models had this feature built into them but I still prefer mechanical SLRs um, at least recently just simply due to the fact that you know electronic um, film cameras can break easily and are harder to fix but mechanical ones just tend to kind of last longer you can do double exposures with many different film cameras mechanical slrs are the safest bet but before buying your film camera for double exposures i would suggest simply googling film camera model plus double exposures just to make sure that you can do this because not every camera model tends to allow it and if you have no idea which camera model to buy, here's a couple of common recommendations that allow double exposures. And I also forgot to mention that even if your camera doesn't allow double exposures, there's always the option of shooting an entire roll of film first and just running it through your camera a second time, shooting an entire roll of double exposures. But this tends to be a bit more difficult simply because you have to remember exactly um, the order and uh, type of shots you took and then you have to repeat this so it is a lot easier if you do have some sort of functionality to take these double exposures at once. Now to the more you know interesting part of this video how to actually take double exposures that are good and interesting and not too gimmicky. Now when I was scripting this video I kind of debated how much I should reveal about the exact strategies and shooting these because really half the fun has just been experimenting with the film and seeing what works and what doesn't. So I decided I didn't want to entirely take away that experience from you by giving too many spoilers if you will. Even though if you are clever and experienced in photography you can probably figure out immediately what I'm doing in this. But in any case what I thought would be best to kind of explain here is simply my philosophy when it comes to shooting these and what I'm looking for and how I think about them. Now it all depends on your individual style as a photographer. 
of course and you know the best way to go about this is to is to think of how you can make double exposures in your own style not just copying someone else's ideas completely but the philosophy that i approach double exposures with is i try to keep it kind of subtle as subtle as possible first i'm looking for a photo that is very minimalistic and then i'm adding some fairly subtle elements into the photo so way to think about this is you can take a photo that is very simple and minimalistic and then think how can i make this photo just a little bit more interesting by adding a certain either a texture or a color sometimes even just bokeh can be interesting when added into the photo now obviously there are almost unlimited options when it comes to shooting double exposures just to kind of clarify i've shot maybe about 30 or 40 double exposures in total so far and not all of them were following this principle but out of the ones that i like the best i noticed they were the subtle ones so that would be the direction that i would continue to keep going as i keep exploring this form of photography but of course that is just something that has worked for me personally and maybe i'll change my mind as i go forward as well Now, if you've never shot any film before, um, I would suggest just shooting a couple of rolls of regular film photos first, because in film, because you cannot instantly see what you're shooting from the back of the camera, like you cannot be digital, the possibility of messing up is a lot greater because you cannot immediately learn from your mistakes. So then if you start shooting double exposures, there's even more chances to mess up. So that's what I would suggest, just get familiar with your film camera, shoot a couple of rolls, get familiar with the you know, reading the meter and how to expose properly. Once you get that figured out, then you can move on to experimenting with double exposures. Now, a couple of things that you want to keep in mind because a lot of these did go wrong. Um, first of all, you should probably remember what the first frame was. Um, some people go as far as taking a note with their phone, taking a photo and then looking back at it and trying to compose in that. You know, if there's a long gap of time between shooting the first exposure and the second exposure, you might want to do that. Um, I just kind of go by memory because I have a massive brain. But you also want to, <laughs> but you also want to, you know, just make sure that you remember to underexpose the double exposure by about one stop each. So then when you combine those, the exposure will be proper. If you don't do this, it will overexpose the film because you're exposing one portion of film twice. Now, in order to properly do that, you have to know the light meter inside of your camera. It probably helps if you have an external light meter, but if you don't, you gotta learn how to read your specific light meter. You gotta make sure that you're actually underexposing and not just seeing the meter say it's underexposed, but you're actually pointing at something that would, you know, give an incorrect reading. So that's one thing that can go wrong. Second thing that can go wrong is simply focusing. I can't tell you how many times I've missed focus on a film camera simply because I just wasn't focusing enough on the focusing. I wasn't paying enough attention on a very, very accurate focus. And when you're doing it wide open at f2 or f1.8 or f1.4, you really have to nail it. So keep that in mind. And then there's other things you gotta remember, like on my camera, for example, you have to take an empty frame after the double exposure. Otherwise it can result in overlapping images. Now this is something that doesn't um, exist as a problem on all camera types, but on my camera type, it is one thing that I gotta keep in mind. So there's gonna be a lot of things you gotta remember. So that's why I also recommend just kind of getting familiar with your camera first before getting into these. Recently I had the pleasure of doing an interview with one of my favorite photographers and one of the most well-known or at least one of the best in my opinion and in many people's opinion double exposure photographers who is um, Louis Daisy. You can check out the interview on my website. Um, that's going to give you some additional tips and information on how to really get better at double exposures. I recommend you check out the interview and also just check out Louis's work. I'll leave some links in the description and I'll put them here as graphics as well. 
And with that, I think it is time to end this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys learned something. If you do take film double exposures, um, let me know. I'd like to see them. Send me a DM on Twitter or Instagram. I don't think I accept Twitter DMs because there's too many spam. But you know, you can tag me. And also leave me a comment and subscribe and like the video if you liked it. And I'll see you in the next one. I'm also wondering what kind of a video should I make next. I have one idea to make a video about just how I feel about my Leica M10 after shooting it for a year. But I'm not sure if you guys even care about gear at this point. Maybe I should just stick to these kind of more, more interesting videos about photography and not focus on gear. Uh, I'm not really sure. In the case of Leica, it's kind of a special type of gear review. It's more about the feeling of the camera instead of like a technical review which bores me to death. I also have another video idea about talking about how to take feedback the proper way because there's a kind of a kind of a paradox between when new photographers want to get better photography they have to be very critical but if they take criticism from the wrong type of people it can kind of mess up their development so I would like to kind of talk about that but I still have to align my thoughts. Now any kind of video ideas you can suggest me I'm always listening because you know it's not that easy to keep coming up with new ideas. I think I'm gonna keep doing the behind the scenes stuff anyway still. Um, I've shot some film here in Bangkok and will continue doing that. Probably do an episode on that at some point. Anyway, that's all. Thank you very much for watching again. <laughs>